Hey everybody, Mandisa sent me a question that's very typical of the GED. The GED loves talking about lines and slope and points, all these graphing concepts, and all three of them are in this question. So let's go ahead and take a look. It says find the equation of the line with a slope of negative seven, which passes through the point four, eight find the equation of the line. Okay, so good thing to do when you're looking at a word problem is to just kind of, uh, before you even begin, start with where uh, am I starting? What have I been given? What do I already know? And where am I going? What's the end goal? What are they telling me to find? So they're very clear what they'd like me to find. They'd like me to find the equation of the line. Find the equation of the line. So this is my end goal. My answer is an equation. Um, a lot of students freak out about that. We're used to an answer being a single number. So it stresses us out when the answer is an equation. But they told us they want an equation for an answer. So we better be an obe obedient, okay? So that's one thing. And then let's talk about what we've been given here. What do we already know? Well, um, we know, uh, let's see, find the equation of the line with a slope of negative seven. We know the slope. Now, I could just come down here and write slope is negative seven. If I have to tell you I'm a super lazy math teacher and we avoid spelling words whenever possible. And so we use letters often to abbreviate for words. And I really wanted to point this out to you because the letter we use for slope confuses a lot of students. We use the letter M to stand for slope. And you're thinking, why don't we use S? Um, I don't know why we don't use S, but I do know that the M is to stand for the French word for to climb, monter, to climb. And so um, I'm just going to abbreviate that um, slope is negative 7 by saying M is negative seven. Again, I'm not um, doing any math yet. I'm just writing out what I've been given. I've been given my slope, which is negative seven. That's how I read that little phrase there. Great. Now we've been given one other piece of information. We see that our line passes through the point for eight. So here we have this line. Um, let's try to kind of sketch it. It's got a slope of negative seven, so it's dropping really quickly. And at some point, it goes meandering through four eight. So this is the situation we've got, and they want us to make the equation of this line. Okay, so how do we usually write equations of lines? Well, if you pull up your GED formula sheet, you're gonna see something that's called the slope intercept form of a line. Slope, into the, again, this is from the GED formula sheet. You do not have to memorize this. This will be given to you when you take your GED. And the slope-intercept form of a line, or the slope-intercept equation of a line, looks like this. Y equals mx plus b. Okay, great. So it looks like this, which confuses a lot of students because they're like, there's too many letters. <laughs> y, M, X, B, I can't handle this many letters. I need some numbers. So one thing to know is that to turn this right now, this is the equation of any line. Any line can be modeled Y equals MX plus B because I haven't filled in the numbers yet. It's just this generic formula for a line. Okay, and notice what you see here, that little letter M. That was the generic we said for slope. Now we're used to x and y, right? x and y are these points on the graph, but m is slope. Okay, now what's b then? b, well, mathematicians aren't very creative. Notice how I call this the slope-intercept form of a line? If m is the slope, you know what b is? It's the y-intercept. It's where my line, so my line over, maybe it's over here, if that's four, eight, it would be back here somewhere. It's where my line crosses the y-axis, the axis that goes straight up and down. Okay, so now that I have all this information, maybe you're thinking, well, what in the world am I gonna do with this? Well, we said to turn this equation into a 
uh, equation of a single solitary line, what you're going to have to do is find out what that slope is and what that y-intercept is. So that's always your goal. What number would m be? What number would b be? Well, we already know m. They told us. So they did part of the work for us. Our m is negative 7. But the problem is we don't know b. Nowhere in this problem does it tell us what the y-intercept is. And so that's really the meat of the problem. And that's what we're going to need to start with. We are going to have to find b before we can do anything else. Now, don't throw up your hands in despair. You don't have to go do something else to find B. Um, there's actually multiple ways to do this. I'm going to do it one little way, um, and I recognize that there's another way. If you do it another way, um, good for you. Um, but I just want to use this one formula. So I'm going to start with this exact formula that we were looking at because I'd like us to realize that even though we only need X, um, M and B filled in to make this the equation of a line, we actually have four letters here, one of them being B, and we know some of the other three right now. Remember that we also have a point. A point is an X value and a Y value. Now in the final of equation of a line, you don't have that X and Y um, filled out, but right now we could use that X value and that Y value so that we could get rid of these letters here and find out what B is equal to. Let me show you what I mean because I think I've talked way too much already. Let's plug in what we know in this equation. We know a Y value, 8. I'm going to write 8 under Y. When um, plugging into an equation uh, you or substituting in algebra, you do not change equal signs but you can change letters. We also know what m is equal to. m is our slope, and we said our m was negative 7. We also have an x value because we know one of the points. Um, a point is an x value and a y value. So the x value we have here in our point is 4. And notice I plug it in using parentheses because when two things are shoved together like this, they're multiplying. Now. I am not going to change my operation of plus, so that'll just drop down. And I don't know what b is, so that'll just drop down. But I want you to see what I've done here. What I've done, any time you can have equation left with just one letter, just one letter, so you replace all the other letters, you have something you can solve for um, that you can find out exactly what number it's equal to. So let's do that. Let's do this math and solve for b. And that's my end goal here. I want to know what b is. So um, this is some uh, negative 7 times 4. That's some simplifying I can do. I know what that is. That's negative 28. I'll drop down everything else. I haven't used the plus b. I haven't used the equal 8. Um, now I want b to be alone. If I would like to uh, zero out a negative 28, I need the opposite of negative 28 or minusing 28, which is positive 28. I'm going to add 28 to both sides of my equation because the rule of uh, equations is I can do whatever I want as long as I do it to both sides. So 8 plus 28, see that math? I'm just adding down this side here. 8 plus 28 is 36, and that's going to be equal to, let's see what happens on this side, negative 28 and positive 28 cancel out, and I'm left with positive b. See that plus b? But I know that plus b or positive b is the same as just b. And so I get my answer here, b is equal to 36. And then people get so excited, they're like, I'm done, I found my b. And that is one of the reasons I always ask you to look at your end goal. What was your end goal? Your end goal was not to solve for b or find the y-intercept. Your end goal was to find the equation of the line. Find the equation of the line. Well, remember, an equation of a line is written in that form y equals mx plus b. And you're like, Kate, are we really going back to there? We were just, we started there. Yes, but we're going to do something different with it this time. The first time we used it to find b or solve for b. This time we're using it to write the equation of a line. And remember what I said, it's the equation of a certain specific line when you fill in m and b, not x and y. So I'll leave y. You say, why? Why would I not fill in my x and y? You told me I know what my x and y is. 
Huh. Guys, that was only one point on that line. If you fill in that X and Y, you're just looking at one point. If you want to look at every point on that line, there's lots of X and Ys on this line. This point moves through space. It consists of, or this line, I'm sorry, consists of many points. And so I'm saying whenever Y is related to x this way, you're on this line, okay? So, but we will plug in our m. We do know our m. We had said from the beginning that our m was negative seven. So let's plug negative seven in, negative seven. Now again, we're gonna leave x and y, x and y, when we write the equations of lines. We're gonna leave plus signs. And now my b, what is my b? Well, I just solved for b. That was what that work was for. I knew I needed m and I needed b. And so my uh, b is 36. So I'll write 36 where I see b. And boom, there you go. That is the equation of the line. So if you have any questions, make sure to drop them in the comments. I realized that I talked a lot in this video. Um, uh, I really, really, really think it's important that you know why we're doing what we're doing or you're just not going to remember it. Um, so, but yes, this concept is definitely, definitely something to be really good at in order to take your GED. So don't stop here. Go and practice this a lot of times until you're used to this pretty, um, uh, pretty like theoretical language. It's it's uh, hard for a lot of students to grasp. Draw these out. See what this means. If I say that I have a an equation of y equals negative seven x plus thirty six, I've got a line that goes down quickly. It's got a slope of negative seven. It crosses over that y axis at thirty six. This is not just some random theoretical nonsense this equation this equation is like a landmark it's like directions that tell me how to draw this and how to look at this line okay so anyway that is your answer y equals negative 7x plus 36 they asked me for the equation of a line for an answer and there's my equation of a line um, again if you have any questions drop them in the comments I'll answer them as best I can and we'll definitely be needing to get some more videos out like this huh